Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Threading the Needle. I'm here today with my co-host, Becca Jeems, and we're very fortunate to have Charlie Warner join us today. Charlie, you know, it's you've been pretty active since uh, the end of the football season. Uh, the, we're going to get to that, but the first thing, now that you've officially moved out of Athens, uh, my sources there spotted you this weekend. What, 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 what's it like uh, knowing that uh, that chapter is pretty much a, pretty much over? Yeah, it's definitely weird. Um, yeah, I had, definitely had a good neighbor to my right, but uh, no, it's it's definitely weird moving out and finally being done. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed my time in Athens and being a bulldog and still will be a bulldog being just, I don't know, it's different, you know, moving out and kind of, it kind of, it it, it's kind of been sinking in, but then really moving out of the house and, um, you know, especially with this, all this fire stuff going on, it just feels weird to finally be done. So it really makes me appreciative of my four years in Georgia. Well, and like everyone, you know, this last month has been, you know, something that hopefully none of us have to go through uh, ever again. What have you been doing the last month to kind of keep your, you know, keep your head screwed on obviously you got the draft and whatnot coming but beyond that yeah I mean I've just been working out um you know trying to stay in shape the best I can um and just doing a lot of phone calls with the uh, NFL teams and tight end coaches and whatnot um and just on the my off time I mean I'm, I'm not I already graduated in December so I'm just hunting and fishing besides that yeah Charlie I um I understand during this pandemic you've been quarantined with your future father-in-law how's that been uh, it's been a lot of fun. We, uh, I, yeah, I stayed three weeks up there with with my fiance Sydney and her folks, and so we've been fishing and hunting a lot. Um, it's been fun, and um, just to be in a different state doing that in North Carolina, it's been it's been fun. But uh, yeah. yeah it's been, and how it's about been, that uh, guitar playing? You've been picking up that guitar since Christmas. Yeah, I'm not very good, but um, it's fun to piddle around with and uh, and play a little bit. Not very good, but I'm practicing. Hey, I believe in you. Thanks, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Charlie, I've touched on it a little bit. Take us through uh, after the bowl game till 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 now. What all your schedule encompassed? I know you you know been went down training somewhere. Just take 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 us through kind of your last four months. Yeah, so right after the bowl game, uh, I headed down to Miami, and that's where I did my um, my combine training down there. I was down there for. Uh, I was well. I guess I'll go specific. I was down there for a week, and then I went straight after that week. I went down, uh, went over to LA for the NFLPA uh, game. It was a senior game, senior bowl type game. Uh, I was there for a week in LA, came back, and then I trained for, I guess, five weeks until the combine, which is end of February somewhere in there. Went up to Indianapolis, did the combine, came back to Miami for a week, and then. <clears throat> once I was done with Miami, I went back towards Athens. And basically, once I got towards Athens, it was only, I think, seven days before the pro day. And that's when everything started to get canceled and shut down and stuff. So uh, I was there for a little bit. And then um, once once the university closed and pro day was canceled and I couldn't work out anymore, I, uh, I, w I went home for a week and then went to my fiance's house for two, three weeks. And then now I'm back home this week for draft week. Yeah, so – with Pro Day being canceled, and obviously you had a lot going on with your schedule leading up to Pro Day and preparing for that, can you kind of talk about the disappointment of not having Pro Day and what it's looked like instead of that? Like, has there been any change? Have you had to adjust to show your skills to teams differently? What's that look like? Yeah, it was definitely sad not to have Pro Day. I was looking, I was looking forward to it, you know, to do one last thing with my with my seniors, you know, and to run around, to play, you know, just to just to. I mean, I was for, very fortunate to, to go to the combine now that looking back now that Pro Day was canceled. I mean, the combine was huge for me. Um, but it still stinks that we didn't have the Pro Day. Didn't, didn't get to do it with my friends. And uh, um, I guess since it was canceled, the way it's changed, and I would just say in general, since everything's kind of gotten canceled, is it's just been a lot of stuff over the phone, um, whether it's FaceTime or like a Zoom thing or just talking on the phone to – uh, like a tight end coach or a scout or how, what 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 have you. Um, it's been a lot of that because you weren't able to talk to someone at pro day. So, Charlie, getting back to your working out down in mind, what was what was the biggest difference in preparing for the combine as far as you know the technical 
as far as the working out, I mean, exactly what were you focused on and how was it kind of different than, you know, your years at Georgia? Yeah, it's a lot different. That's for sure. I mean, you're, you're not, you're not really training for a, for a football. It's, you're not training for football. You're training for a track meet, essentially. I mean, that's what the combine essentially is. They want to see how fast you are, how high you can jump, how far you can jump. You know, you, and you're definitely doing football related things like running routes still, and you're still getting stronger, but it's, it's geared towards, I mean, mainly a guy like me, I needed to show how fast I was, and, you know, be as fast as I could be. So it was really just a track meet for me. It was just to me back to high school, doing so much running, so much 40 yard, just really technical stuff. And, uh, and it was a lot different, you know, it was, it was fun to ch- kind of change it up, but, um, you know, you can't really train like that for football, but you get, you can train like that for the combine. And then at the combine, you you did really well from what I've what I've read and whatnot. Uh, did, did you get some immediate feedback from your performance there? Yeah, I think most teams were pleased with what I had. Yeah, I ran faster than what I thought I was going to, and um, I don't know. I just I couldn't look back and be mad with with how I did because I know that I put all the uh, I, I put all the work in I could during before the combine, and I did the best I could at the combine. So I was pleased with what I did. Um, Charlie, how excited are you about draft week? Like, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm back home. I hang out with my family. Um, kind of just waiting towards this weekend. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. I put all me and my, you know, everyone who's on my side, we put all the put all the cards on the table. You know, we put all the chips in. So we're uh, just ready to see what happens. And I'm excited. I know that uh, I know that I've done my best. Yeah. And now, since they're not having fans and fanfare and everything at the draft, like, what will that look like for y'all? Do y'all have anything going on specific for the draft with your family or that the draft is said to do? Honestly, I don't think the virus really affected what I would have done. I'd have been home regardless. I mean, it's not like I'm going to go super high rounds or nothing, but I would be probably home hanging out with my family anyways. Um, but, no, I was, I'm having all my family over. I'm our, I'm, my fam, my immediate family is over 10, so whatever. But uh, um, no, nah, it'll be fun hanging out with my family and, and uh, enjoying that day. And talk a little bit about what it's been like, uh, the conversations you've had with, with some teams and just that whole process. You know, not asking you to name any of the teams, but just sort of how it works and sort of, you know, what they run you through. Yeah, it's all different. Um, some teams you'll get on a FaceTime with them or whatever, a Zoom meeting. And you'll kind of watch some film with them. You know, you it's essentially doing things that you would have done if they had came to pro day or if they could have worked you out privately, you know, it's, so it's essentially either you're watching film of myself, you know, what we're critiquing myself or we're, you know, they got their, uh, you know, computer turned around and we're drawing, uh, drawing up plays together, just talking football. They're trying to see how smart you are. Um, it's a lot of stuff that goes down the combine too. And then it's, it's either that. Um, and then it's just, talking a lot too over the phone or FaceTime just them trying to get to know you um you know what they're trying to get to know if they want you in their room or not you know um I don't know it's it's a lot of talking on the phone I'd rather talk in person but you know we can't do that so um you gotta do what you gotta do it's been uh it's been interesting though to to um I don't know to go through this process a different way than anyone else ever has you know you can't really go out and ask for advice hey what's gonna happen oh dude I don't know I don't remember coronavirus happening like you yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's a lot different but um it's it's fun to adjust to it and um you know, we're all we're all going through the same thing yeah so with all the uncertainty about the future in terms of what the outcome of the draft is for you what has been something that keeps you grounded in this situation but really in kind of all of the uncertainty that is happening Definitely, what keeps me grounded is just my faith in the Lord Jesus I mean I know that whatever happens, he's got control. And, uh, you know, I'm just living my life for him through all this. And I know he's going to take care of me. And just, you know, I don't know. It's it's, it's simple to me. And uh, also having having to go through all this with my fiance, you know, who is soon to be my wife, is super awesome, too. You know, that I get to, you know, most people these early 20s are kind of scary going into the real world out of college. But I got her to do it with. And uh, she's, you know, Sydney's super awesome to um to have by my side and to, to tackle this world together. So it's, it's kept me grounded, kept me humble, and just gives me confidence going into the unknown. Since we're Bulldog Illustrated, what is or has been your favorite part about being a dog? And what will you remember most about your time at Georgia? All right, well, what I, my favorite part of being a Bulldog, 
Um, I would say just playing on Saturdays has been one of the, the coolest things to happen. And just – it's that's that sounds kind of shallow to what I want to say because what I want to say – what I'm about to say is being a Bulldog has meant so much to me because I've met so many – lifelong friends through being a bulldog and it's being a bulldog can mean means to me like relationships now you know because I've met some of the best friends in the world I've met my future wife um and that's been one of the best things ever you know I never would have thought what how four years ago when I was 18 I, that all that would have happened in four years you know I mean from 18 to 22 it's been just like a straight up and it's been awesome um and I don't know, I just remember one moment, it kind of sums it up for me, is when I was walking, my last dog walk, and, and I was walking down the dog walk for the last time, and Sydney sits standing there next to my, next to her folks or someone, and she turns around, takes her jacket off, and it says, future Miss Warner on it, 89, and uh, I just started to cry on my last dog walk, and I really just started to think about how many memories I've had in Athens, and, and that's for everyone who goes to Georgia, I mean, there's something cool about the University of Georgia, there's so many so many reasons why people come back for for games and the people that want to live there now I mean I don't know it just Athens and comfort encompasses so much to me and it's uh it's been a, it's been a lot of good memories and yeah. that feeds that feeds in great to my last question is there somebody uh at Georgia other than a player or a coach that you know, it's meant a lot to you that you'd like to give. And I'm granted, if it's, this person's as special as I think they will be, whomever you name. But just a shout out that for what they meant to you uh, during your time at Georgia. Not necessarily a staff member or a pl fellow player. I mean, I'm going to say Sydney then. That, is, that, is that acceptable there? Yeah, well, that'll be. I might make you do one more, but yeah, that's definitely acceptable. It, it's definitely Sydney. I mean, the amount of stuff that we've both been through in our four years in college, and we've known each other for over three, but um, I, you just can't you can't describe the amount of pressures and struggles that D1, you know, a football player at Georgia goes through, um, you know, atop of outside outside issues and then on top of football issues with school with life going on um I mean she's meant the world to me and there's no way I could have gotten through without her um and I just really thank the Lord every day for her and that she was in my life to get me not to get me through but just to help me through and just to do life together um and I just can't thank her enough you got another one besides I Besides her, I mean, I, you can't top it. You can't, you can't follow it up. Nice. Like that. <laughs> That's a good way to go into marriage. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, also, I love that story about the jersey too because we were hiding that in the house for a long time so you wouldn't see it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was cool, man. I really started. I was like, wow. I just, I it, when I'm walking down the dog walk and I saw Future Miss, I was like. It was just like you hit like one of those times in a movie where it like shows all the flashbacks. That's what was happening inside of my head. I was like, cool. just all these memories, like different parts of Athens, my house, you know, like in class and like in the football. It was just like, boom, like, wow, all of this happened. Um, Charlie, what I know personally that you really care about all the guys on your team, especially the tight end guys, as you've really developed a deeper relationship with them. What is one word or piece of advice that you would like to give? those tight ends your team whatever yeah just to just to work hard as as hard as you can because that's going to pay off on the field and it's going to pay off after you're done with your uh with your football days it's going to it's going to work out into other things in other areas of your life and also just enjoy it and um make relationships because that's what lasts and that's what you that's what you really get out of your time there i mean you make really good friends and uh you know i don't know i think you can say that for anyone either you're a regular student or a athlete you know um just enjoy your time and make make the most of it you know don't be uh i don't know do 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 things out of the ordinary and that's gonna help you grow that's definitely what i did i'm a kid from a small town um and you go to and i went to georgia and it's like <clears throat> i don't know i just did things out of the ordinary and you get out of your comfort zone and you make friends and you, uh, you grow together and, uh i don't know just be you and um yeah don't be afraid to be you that's a perfect ending man we uh and really that's what any college is like, but you know, us in Bulldog Nation, we, we feel like we do it better and, and live that experience. And of course, we all get to relive it on Saturdays, thanks to people like you who 
you know, the commitment you gave to Georgia. We're very appreciative. And uh, definitely don't be a stranger, my friend. And good luck, won't. good luck this week. And uh, with that, we'll end the show. Thanks so much to Charlie. Yeah. And Thank you.